a Build Hatch developed production. Hello, I'm Aaron Kyle and welcome to another episode of Build Hatch. On this week's episode of Build Hatch, I got to sit down with a really passionate marketing professional, Amanda from Sea Salt Marketing. Amanda runs a digital marketing agency, which has a huge presence in the building and construction industry, as well as other industries, of course. As I said, Amanda is very passionate about what she does. And as you'll hear, Amanda was extremely generous and informative in sharing the nuts and bolts of marketing in our construction businesses. Amanda was full of knowledge and has a really deep connection with helping those that work in our industry to grow and invest into our brands. And what's even more important, Amanda and her team at Seasalt, they love to be part of your team culture and DNA. And that's particularly important as we approach Christmas and New Year and we start to think about next year's aspirations. So this was a great one. Now let's get into it. Amanda from Seasalt Marketing, welcome to Build Hatch. Thank you for having me, Aaron. That's okay. Now, your background's in marketing, so before we talk about your business and what you do, I always like to know where I guess grew up and what your childhood was like. So, whereabouts did you grow up? So, I'm from a little coastal town in Victoria called Point Lonsdale. Uh, my parents did the sea change when I was about nine from Melbourne and then had a bit of a beach lifestyle for my childhood. Then I moved to Melbourne for uni and then... I pretty much travelled around Australia for five or six years with my partner living in all sorts of rural areas, um, Broome, Cairns, Hobart, and now we're in Sydney. Now, Point Lonsdale, that's a pretty cool surfing little town. Yes. I've been through there. So what was that like? Like, it would have been a really nice place to grow up. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, it's something that's kind of ingrained in me. Like, I always now look for beach towns and I feel at home know when there's a beach around um, I think the lifestyle of having the beach at the end of the road and just fresh air and not that hustle and bustle of the city was such a nice place to grow up um, yeah and a lot more outdoorsy you know so instead of shopping and partying on the weekend you're going to the beach or going surfing or whatever beautiful place to grow up absolutely love it I actually spent a fair bit of my childhood on the Mornington Peninsula so there was always a bit of an East Coast versus West Coast thing happening, oh, wasn't there? Definitely. It's like grommet versus grommet. <laughs> it's like Easter time, Christmas time. They'd all used to come over and it'd be like, oh, the dark side's here, <laughs> you know. So definitely a bit of a battle between the two sides. All right. So going through school, did you sort of set out to enter marketing or what were you sort of aspiring to be? I did like school. Like I was a bit of a nerd. Like I did study, get good marks. I, I, I did want to get into business, um, but I wanted to do something a little bit more creative. So we had this in year 10, we did work experience and I went off and did a week with my uncle at a, at a sales um, agency in Melbourne, um, APN Outdoor at the time. And I did a week there and, you know, he took me to these lunches and we went and met clients and his boss had this like golf putting thing in the office and I just thought this is awesome this is what I want to be doing so that's how I kind of decided to get into that sales and marketing space um, and then yeah I did get into like went to uni RMIT and did Bachelor of Business Marketing and followed a pretty traditional corporate ladder situation um, and you know worked at lots of different organizations all in marketing before I started to do it myself and start my own business. The name Sea Salt Marketing I always try and link a name and a bit of a story behind the, the name so does that go back to your Point Lonsdale roots? Yeah it does so I have always loved the beach and um, when I started the business I was thinking of a whole lot of names as you do. Sea Salt the first thing that came to mind it was just a very um it just felt good and then I literally came up with a hundred other options I you know brainstormed all these different territories did the typical marketing setup of what does the brand mean how can it connect to me and I just kept coming back to do you know what sea salt love the beach it's got that fresh outdoorsy feel laid back which is just me and so just thought no nah, I'm just going to go with my gut and we're running with sea salt <laughs> And it makes you feel happy instantly just hearing it. Mm, exactly. 
Okay, so what about building and construction? So your business works heavily in building and construction and you know, a lot of your clientele are uh, builders and subbies. So how did you sort of enter that sort of realm? Yeah, so I mean, as everyone starts their business, I was taking on every client that came along, you know, so were, I had no niche. It was just more of a, yeah, I need help with my marketing, sure, I'll help you out. So my first set of clients were a whole lot of tourism, hospitality, fashion type clients. Uh, and then I got one builder on the book. So, and they're still a client of mine today. And so when I started working with them, you know, their marketing consisted of letterbox drops and sponsoring local footy teams and, you know, social media was just so far from what they understood. It wasn't and even. So how long ago was this? This was four or five years ago. Yeah, so it wasn't even that long ago, was it? No. So I started working with them and I put together a marketing strategy. I don't think they really understood what I put together, but they trusted that I knew what I was doing and they were willing to give it a go. So within six months, I think their inquiry had gone through the roof. They'd hired more staff. They were just hammering along. And so they thought, okay, this marketing stuff works and then it was just it's a bit of word of mouth and I think the industry is a bit like that it's referral based and so a lot of my clients come through referral from other builders based on obviously the results that they're getting and um, what they're seeing so that's how it all snowballed from there really. I think that would have been a, a really critical moment in time I'm no expert in marketing by any means right but from what I can tell the the change in marketing that's shifted over the last four or five years, like you said, has been astronomical really. If I could kind of relate it back to, I guess, older people resisting the urge to use mobile phones or we've had that generation and we've had that era go, now everyone's using mobile phones. So I think we've hit that shift now. That's well and truly behind us. So now everyone's embracing new forms of marketing. Absolutely. And uh, I would say that probably 50% of my clients use social media themselves and 50% don't. Like their kids use it. They know that they need to use it. Their wife tells them they need to use it, but they they don't and they don't get it. But they come to us as, you know, as a, as a bit of an expert support to say, okay, I need to be on these platforms. How can I actually leverage it for my business in a professional way? Uh, and, that, you know, we take I guess, the worry out of social media and marketing for them and, and manage that on their behalf and get the results as well. I'll tell you a funny story. When I had a subby working for me, he was a chippy and he resisted the urge to have a mobile phone. So the only way you could get him was on the landline. So if you didn't get him in the morning and something happened like a job site changed or something had come up and we couldn't work on that site, it was extremely difficult and you could only get him on the landline. That was it. So often I think, how did we ever cope with not having these new modern forms of communication and, and, and marketing? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's opened up a whole new channel to be able to reach people in a really authentic way. And I feel like it's also, it's not as pushy as some traditional marketing channels. Like you do a TV ad or you put a print magazine add in it's, it's all very salesy we're the best builder in Melbourne choose us to build your home whereas you know social media you can start building a relationship with, with your clientele and and they can get to know you as a as a person behind the brand you know you know who's the builder that's going to be building my home this is probably the biggest amount of money they're ever going to spend in their life they want to know who you are and if you're going to take care of of their project and social media is I guess, given the building construction industry an avenue to be able to to do that outside of obviously referral and word of mouth. Yeah, I talk about this just about every week, but the way I see it is it allows people to watch and not so much stalk, but by the time they've made an inquiry, they've watched you on social media, how you've interacted, how you've behaved, what your sites look like, things like that. So they've already established a little bit of an expectation before they make that inquiry so you're right where you say about they want to make sure that they're putting their money in good hands oh definitely and 
and I say that, you know, a lot of builders come to me with all of my work comes through referral and word of mouth, you know, and look, social media and marketing, digital marketing in particular, yes, we will open another channel up for new inquiry, but it also really supports word of mouth and referral because if someone, an architect or a family friend says, hey, use these builders, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to probably look at your website. They're going to probably start following you on social media and they maybe even sign up to your newsletter to get to know a little bit about who you are and what you do. So marketing plays a really key role in nurturing your word of mouth and referrals and making sure you're actually getting them converted as well as opening up new channels of inquiry of people that may not have heard of you before. So it's definitely... And in terms of the cost of those things as well, like it, it's so much more cost effective to be putting your marketing spend digitally as well because, it, you know, Facebook ads and Google ads, it's, it's under a dollar to reach these customers. You put a TV ad on or print or newspaper and all those things. I mean, they cost thousands and thousands, whereas digitally you don't have to spend a lot to get um, some really good reach into the right audience as well. So if I'm a typical builder or a typical trader and, and I'm interested in engaging with your services and, and having Salt look after my branding and marketing, what, what does a typical brief look like? Is there such thing as a typical brief or how does it work? So if, if we get an inquiry, um, we, I have a marketing questionnaire that I get them to fill out because it's really important for us to know every business is different. We don't have packages it's it's all very tailored towards what that business needs so we have a marketing questionnaire that we send out to them so I really want to understand um, what their niche is that's really important like what they're experts in and also what their business goals are because at the end of the day marketing should be supporting where you want to take the business Uh, and the more that I know about your business goals the, the better the marketing spend and more effective it's going to be and also your target market because, you know, I've got really high-end architectural builders that target, you know, that really high-end wealthy type individual. Uh, and then we've got guys that do house and land packages. It's about volume. It's about family, you know. So I need to know who this target market is. Tell me as much as you possibly can about them. Um, where do they live? What motivates them? Describe your ideal client because all of those things then feed into the strategy to make sure that we're reaching the right people to get the right inquiry. I liked how you just said about you can have like a volume builder where they're chasing the connection and and the family and then you have that high-end architectural builder who's predominantly targeting that that higher end of the market. So you're able to adapt and customise like marketing packages to suit everyone down to the tradie who just wants to work by himself but wants to have a really cool Instagram page. Yeah, definitely. So the thing about digital is that all the channels are the same but the inputs that you put into those channels are different. So everyone's got a different target audience. They're targeting different areas uh, and their their business objectives are different. So we play with those inputs uh, and we put them into our strategies online. Uh, So we make sure that that marketing dollar is reaching your exact target market. We're not wasting any of that money reaching such a broad audience, which is what happens with some traditional marketing channels. Whereas online, we can track and measure every single dollar that's being spent on marketing. And at the end of the day, it's, you know, if you're a builder, you've got a lot to worry about. You've got clients, you've got trades, you've got um, your family, you're you're running a business on your your own or with a business partner. You know, uh, we we want marketing to be worry-free for our builders. So we take that off their plate. They don't need to worry about when the next inquiry is coming in. They don't need to worry about what's happening on social media and doing that Instagram post at, at the end of the day and rushing it. You know, let us take care of that for you and so all you need to worry about is answering the phone and the emails when the inquiry is coming in the door and doing what you do best which is you know building homes and just on that do you have the option where the builder can say well look i'll pay you 
to post every second day or once a day, whatever it might be on Instagram. Is that how it works like that? Yep. So we put together a, a list of activities that I think would benefit that business. So social media would always be a part of that. We would then make a recommendation around how many times a week they should be posting based on their competitors, based on their target market. Um, and we put together a price for that. And we do everything. So all they need to do is supply us with the content and we put together the posts, we write the captions, we do the hashtags, we schedule them in at the best time of day for when the audience is online and we manage that rollout so that they don't need to worry about it. So when is that? Like when is the best time of day? to? Usually it's when people are coming home from work, so it's between kind of 5 and 7 o'clock. There seems to be a peak uh, and then again at about 9, 10 o'clock when people are going to bed. Usually that's what we see is a bit of a trend. It can change but that's a general, general gist, yeah. What are the most common forms? I mean, it might seem obvious, but I always like asking the, the broad question. So if I'm engaging you, like it's obviously Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, bit of SEO. So it depends, again, on what their business objectives are because LinkedIn is a B2B type platform. So if you're a commercial builder and you're targeting businesses, yes, LinkedIn is a great platform for you. If you're a residential builder, custom homes, multi-unit developments, Look, Facebook and Instagram is the place that you need to be when you're going direct to client and even architects as well. That's Instagram is for you. And it's all about who's using those platforms. So Facebook has in Australia 96% of people have a Facebook profile, whereas LinkedIn it's about 20%. Uh, Instagram, That's a big difference, isn't it? It is a big difference. That's so then huge. Instagram, off the top of my head, it's around 50 60%. And Facebook owns Instagram. Some people know that, some people don't. But so everything you do through Facebook, you can also amplify through Instagram. And Facebook knows everything that we do. It tracks everything you do online. So we can place ads in a a very targeted way to reach the exact consumer that we want to reach. Uh, And we can do that in the one platform across both Facebook and Instagram. LinkedIn Their advertising platform is not as sophisticated. It's very, very expensive and they just haven't. Why is it more expensive? Is it because it's not as a mature company? Yeah, I think it's because it doesn't have the same penetration that Facebook and Instagram does. It doesn't reach as many people. The ad platform is also not as sophisticated. So you can't do as much in there. So it's a little bit more broader and... Uh, The cost per click uh, is just so much higher. So it's, you know, over $10 a click type thing, whereas Facebook and Instagram, some of our builders where cost per click is like 20 cents. So it's just a no-brainer for me. I always look for the best option for the client. So if it is more of a commercial builder, sure, let's look at Instagram and I can manage expectations around budget. But for most of our guys, custom home builders, Facebook and Instagram is definitely the place to be. The other conversation is around Google. So it's like online you've got social media and then you've got Google. So Google does definitely play a role in the digital marketing plan. I don't find it as effective as social media. So if you were going to do invest in one thing as a builder in your marketing, I would definitely be recommending a social media strategy as a priority. Second to that, Also, depending on the objectives, um, you could look at SEO, which is getting your website up on the Google searching and also Google AdWords. Now, can you explain to people that are listening to this and they may not understand how it works and I'll give my two cents worth, but the, the key difference with marketing platforms as opposed to, say, SEO is... With Google or SEO, you're waiting on someone to do a search for your business in that area or or something to do with that. Whereas with Facebook and Instagram, it's more directed. It's targeted at people that are already actively looking for a builder or a trade in their area. So you're not waiting for that person to search as such. You're actually directing traffic or that, that banner or that advertising to them directly where they can see it. Yep, that's right. That's exactly right. So you can do that through Google, through Google AdWords as well. The the biggest difference between the two is that social media is so much more visual. And so for my builders who have all of these beautiful homes that we can showcase, 
it just makes so much more sense to be putting them onto a visual advertising platform um, as opposed to Google, which is, you know, it's it's text, it's written form, it's you're searching builders in Melbourne or custom home builders Brunswick or something like that. And it's a much more of a long-term strategy, SEO. So SEO takes years and years to, to build up, to be able to get onto page one for some really high volume words. So you use that as a long-term marketing strategy. Whereas your social media, exactly what you said, it's like you can push a message out there straight away um, and it becomes, you can put your message in front of their their search straight away. So it's a little bit more of a short-term strategy. With and it's there. instant. Like if, if, if I'm on the tools or I'm a builder working on site and the sun's in the right spot or there's a rainbow or something and the, and the site looks fantastic, bang, take a photo. I can then send it off to, to you guys at Sea Salt and then you can add the content put it up within half an hour, an hour, it's it's live and everyone can see it. Absolutely. And we work with a lot of our clients. I actually encourage them to do some of that stuff themselves as well because it's always nice to have that authentic, real angle to your socials as well. And something like an Instagram story is a really great place for the guys if they're on site and, you know, the sun's coming up and it looks beautiful. They can just get it straight on the story. They can talk to us about what's happening on site or what's on for the day and then that's on to Instagram for 24 hours and it's like that real behind the scenes feel and then we're coming in with that really nice polished beautiful words getting the hashtags out there making it look wonderful tagging all the right people and it's those two things working together is when it then takes it to the next level yeah it's not like we take it all and you're not allowed to touch your Instagram anymore it's very collaborative it's between. hand in hand yeah absolutely all right so we're talking before about for, say 4 or 5 years ago and things were so much different what about blogs and newsletters like are people still doing those forms of marketing today definitely so a big thing that we push is educational marketing so we don't like to sell to people people don't like being sold to that they can see through it straight away so we have a big focus around educating clients on the building process on building techno- technology building terminology and pushing that out through the form of blogs and newsletters And those types of pieces of content can then be used throughout your whole marketing mix. So, for example, if you're getting a frequently asked question around what's the difference between a prime cost and a provisional sum, okay? It's a frequently asked question. It's something that people Google all the time as well. So we put together a a blog, say 500 words, and we pop that on your website. And we then use that piece of content in your marketing through all of your channels. So... We make sure that it's been crawled by Google, so it's coming up in Google searches. We pop it onto your social media and we drive people to then come back to your website and read more about that piece of content. We pop it into your newsletter. So if people are interested to find out more about you as a builder, they're going to sign up to your database. And so once we've got all these email addresses, they're really valuable. They're they're people that are actively looking for a builder. So let's get some educational content in front of them. So when they're ready to choose their builder, we're building trust and credibility with them on their journey. So we pop that blog into the newsletter along with, you know, the sunset site shot that they've just taken along with maybe a testimonial uh, and a beautiful finished image of one of their latest homes. And we send that off in a newsletter. So having that touch point with them through social media, through the website, through Google, and then in their inbox as well, we're making sure that we're keeping top of mind for when they're ready to choose their builder. I think that's a really good idea. And I liked how you mentioned before about some building terms and being able to throw those technical terms, although they're not technical if you're in the industry, but if you're a client and you've never built before, they're pretty foreign terms. So you're able to, I guess, educate the end user as you go along. Definitely. And it also almost qualifies your users as well. Like you can use your blogs to push your message as well. So a lot of our builders are moving to a design and construct model uh, because they find it easier in terms of process, uh, managing managing the process, efficiencies, client engagement, et cetera. So, you know, we then do a blog plan around what are the benefits of design and construct? Why choose your builder before your architect? All of those things that push our angle, but in an educational way. So by the time the client comes to us, they're already ready to talk design and construct and they know what it is. 
before that, they might not have even known that builders could could offer that service and they might have thought that I, they would have to go to an architect or a drafty before they got to their builder. The thing I like about that, I actually find it quite clever and strategic because you're almost influencing mm. the client. It's part of marketing, not just through a social media post, but you're influencing the client from understanding the builder's business or the tradies' business, who they are, some key terms and, and critical information about all of the things that are going to come up in that transaction. So they're almost influenced into that that relationship or that transaction. So it's very clever. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I think that's that's one thing that we really focus on because you can spend thousands of dollars online and get quantity over quality very easily. And a lot of marketing agencies can do that for you. But we really focus on getting the right people and the right inquiry to you. So having that educational content plan combined with your digital marketing strategy, social media strategy, they all work together to make sure that when that phone rings, it's an A1 client for you. It's it's not someone that's outside your area that wants to build a house and land package and you're an architectural builder. We don't do that. So I think having both the content strategy as well as that social media strategy to push it out there is really important to have the two together. So if if I'm, say, a, a young guy that's starting out as a builder and I want to invest some money, like what does a budget look like? Like is it does it vary? You know, Because in the old days, which we're only talking four or five years ago, like we've been mentioning, it was really the corporates that serve the, the large masses and that's why people had ads in the local paper or a banner on the footy fence or whatever it might be. So whereas now it's a lot more accessible. Definitely. So we work with all sorts of budgets and it depends obviously on the size of the builder and how much they want to grow. But a typical budget, you could get a pretty decent marketing plan for about 1500 bucks a month and then it goes up to five, 10 grand a month, depending if you want videos and all sorts of other things that go with it. But as a starting point, 1500 will get you a long way. That would take a lot of, that would take your social media off your hands, a bit of lead generation, Facebook ads, and maybe a newsletter a month. So you could definitely, as a starting point, look at something like that. That's pretty reasonable considering you only have to get two or three jobs a year as, as a, a decent builder to easily pay that or, or justify that that fee. It's just part of doing business these days, really. Definitely. Like you've got to spend money to make money, but I think the return on investment from a marketing spend for a builder, it just makes so much sense. Like it, you only need pretty much one job to come from your social media or your digital marketing to, to justify the spend for the, for the whole year. So I think from a risk point of view, it's pretty low risk and... It's really measurable. So, you know, I'm sure most of my builders ask where someone found them from when when an inquiry comes through and usually we'll find that they're on the database, they're following us on social media and sometimes they actually say, oh, I saw an ad on social media, I thought I'd call you up. So So there's some connection there. Definitely. Have you got a favourite story or or a case study that you'd like to share that you're really proud of and how it worked? Yeah, so... Our very first builder that came on board, uh, Rhoda Developments, uh, when I met them, you know, it was just two mates. It was just the two of them. I think they had a bookkeeper at the time. Uh, They didn't really know too much about marketing. Um, They were in the renovation space. And since five years ago, that business has evolved into a team of about 12 or 15 I don't know what their exact turnover is, but it's definitely in the double-digit millions. They've niched into this really beautiful custom home space uh, and multi-unit developments and have also got this style studio in, inside their office where clients can come in and touch and feel and, and choose all of their fixtures and finishes. And that business has just gone from, you know, a small carpentry tradey renovation business to this leader in custom homes and multi-unit developments in Melbourne and being part of that journey with them is really rewarding like it's 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 such a success story and it, and it just shows that 
with continued investment in marketing and the value of of investing in your brand and, and your message can really have a big effect in on your business growth. Marketing isn't something that they feel the need to bring in-house. It's they've got so many other things that they prioritise in terms of estimating, design, site management, all those types of things are more important than, say, bringing marketing in-house. So it's it's something that we've built a really strong relationship with them. And, I mean, we feel like we're part of the team as well. So, uh, and that's how I would want all of my clients to feel. We get invited to all their Christmas parties because, <laughs> you know, so it's 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 building that relationship, I guess, and, and really being invested in the business's success and, and seeing it actually happen. It's really rewarding. Yeah, I love stories like that. And, and I, I think this comes down to the the key form of marketing in that you're able to capture marketing now whereas in the old days you would put an ad out there you wouldn't capture same with the yellow pages like you could only measure it from people calling up and making inquiries where whereas nowadays you can track it so you can kind of hold hands with with the client and say well this month we've spent 1500 bucks on marketing we've generated 25 inquiries from that 25 percent of those have turned into solid leads so you can capture it and track it and that's where it becomes an investment where people can say okay i can see where my money's going i can see it's going in the same direction as my cash flow or profit margin or new job list so it makes sense to just keep having you as part of their their family and and growing over the years yeah, definitely. I think a big part of what we do is a really big focus on that reporting element. So I'm really passionate about showing my clients what their ROI is and, and what their return on that marketing dollar is. Because I think sometimes marketing can be a bit confusing and when, when you're not really sure what to expect or or what you're getting out of your money, um, having that really transparent process around reporting uh, and what what that is delivering to your business in terms of inquiries, in terms of followers, database growth, website traffic, all of those things can be measured. I think it's good for for the client and, it, and it's also good for us because we see what's working and what's not. And if something's not working, I straight away say, this money isn't working, let's either put it somewhere else or put it back into your pocket because it's not working in this channel and we'll think of something else. Having that just honest, transparent approach and like I would want someone to treat my business like that if they were taking my marketing dollar so we make sure that we do that with our clients as well. Okay, so I'm still fascinated like how do I know what what's good enough in, in terms of marketing like besides having measurables and things like that, what's can you get away with an Instagram account only these days or how does it work? So there's definitely a bit of a checklist around marketing the very first thing that you've got to have is a really nice looking website that presents your brand in the best possible way to attract the right type of clientele. So on your checklist, your first thing would be, do I have a really nice website that represents me and my business? Then get yourself on Google. So Google business listing, people have got to find you. you know? So there's that's a free avenue that you can use as a builder. Get your business on Google business listing. Then it comes into your social media. So as a builder these days, have to have a profile on Facebook and Instagram as a minimum and then LinkedIn as a secondary. And then your content. So once you've got this website, you've got your social media set up, what are you then sharing with your audience? So having really good quality photos, having behind the scenes shots of your sites and what's happening uh, and then potentially even looking at some video as well. There's about nine things that I look at in terms of what what your key marketing checklist would be. And, you know, we've got that checklist on our website and if you're a builder and you want to see what that is, um, jump on the website and download it from there. But that gives you a really good, I guess, platform to go okay I'm ticking all the marketing boxes and then from there you can decide whether you want to invest more and get some help in that space which obviously we can help with that as well. Now straight up after hearing that list I can already conclude like if, if you're a builder or a tradie 
to have the time to be effective in those areas of marketing, I can see why you need to outsource it. You can get to a certain point internally, but then you need to outsource it because it's a lot of time and effort, isn't it? It is. And it, it just comes to back to what do you value your time doing? So if, if, if you think that you've got enough time to put together all your social posts and post it out on Instagram and find out what all the hashtags are and, and, and get that out and that's just you know one of the nine things that we've just gone through, do it. If you think that your time is better spent updating clients, converting sales, talking to trades, going on site, then obviously that's something that can be easily outsourced and would benefit you, I think, in the long run in terms of where you're best to spend your time and your business. You have an office in Sydney and Melbourne, so if people listening to this want to reach out and have a look at your services and what you can provide them, what's the best way for them to go about it? Uh, definitely jump on our website at seasaltmarketing.com.au or follow us on Instagram at seasaltmarketing. Uh, we've got yeah team in my team's in Melbourne. Uh, I'm based in Sydney, but we do go between the two. But obviously, as a digital marketing agency, we are very digital, so a lot of our meetings are done on Zoom anyway, uh, which this year has been what everyone has been doing. So. We work with clients all over Australia. It doesn't matter where you are. We can definitely have a chat to you. Okay, so I still have two questions for you, right? So like the obvious question is they seem to be driven by increasing followers because that's how Facebook has done that intentionally to you know, measure things by followers and likes. So how do they increase their following? What's the best way? Is there a secret? That's a really hard question because it used a few years ago, it was really easy to increase your following on Instagram. But these days, the algorithms change so often. Uh, they're making it harder and harder to get that organic reach. They want you to spend money with them. So you've got to have that organic posting where you're just posting to your feed and you really do need to have that paid component as well uh, where you're paying Facebook and Instagram ad spend and we're putting together some sort of campaign and, and pushing your message out to an audience that don't already know who you are. So having a paid strategy on social media will definitely help your following. Hashtags are another way to reach those audiences. The third way that we've found really effective is around collaboration. So some of our builders collaborate with other local businesses and they do things like a giveaway. So particularly with suppliers, this works really well. So we could give away a bar fridge valued at $500 or $1,500 and you've got a like tag share to enter the promotion. Um, and so that's a way to get your following up. But it comes back to what your objectives are. So that is a, I want to tick the ego box and get thousands of followers on my Instagram. If that's what you want to be doing, yes, we can do strategies around that. If you want to target the right people and get leads and get people that want to build with you, I think that watching your followers closely and, and wanting them to go up really shouldn't be where your priorities that are. That shouldn't be a strategy. The, no. the strategy should be having an engaged audience. And leads onto your database. So a lot of what we do is around lead generation. So building up that database of people that are in that building journey and then nurturing those leads through a marketing strategy. This is what I talk to a lot of the builders that I work with about and, and it's right on point, right? It's about that relationship, that transaction is worth so much more than that one transaction. If you do a great job, manage that client well, overperform, exceed expectations, not only will you have that client for another job, you'll have their hairdresser, their doctor, their lawyer, their kids' high school teacher, whatever it might be. That sort of comes back into the old-fashioned forms of marketing. Definitely. Having that word of mouth and having that clients recommend you on to other people, you know, marketing plays a big role in that and, and constantly having good content on your socials, having informative educational blogs in, in your newsletters, keeping up to date with people that you've built for because they're probably still following you, probably still on your database and making sure that, that you're top of mind for their recommendation as well. 
yeah, it's really important to, to nurture that relationship well past the handover date as well. Well, Amanda, it's been really good having you come on to Build Hatch and I've learned a lot. Probably one of the, the biggest lessons I've learned from you and I getting to know each other is it seems to come back to a mix and balance of everything. Like there's no one strategy that works. There's no I'm a Facebook man or I'm an Instagram kind of guy. Like you have to be all over all of the channels nowadays just about. So it's been really good to get an insight into how it all works. Yeah, excellent. And and you're totally right. It's all about those consumer touch points. And just think about your own usage of social media and where you find information. You know, you're on the you're on the news feed, you Google, you've got hundreds of emails a day coming into your inbox. And as a builder, we can leverage all of those different channels uh, to get your message out there. All right, Amanda. Well, thanks again for coming on to Build Hatch. It's been really nice to sit down and talk to you. So really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Aaron. Well, that was another Build Hatch episode with Amanda from Sea Salt Marketing. What an informative discussion. And I'm sure you'll join me in being extremely grateful for her inside knowledge into the marketing world. So please feel free to reach out to her for some marketing inquiries. As usual, please check out our Instagram page where you'll be able to learn more about our guests and some of the features of the work that we talk about. Have a great week and you'll hear me again on the airwaves next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of Build Hatch. You have experienced a Build Hatch developed production. 